In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an existing investment bond to a buoyant plan. From the dashboard, you'll click the plus button in the bottom right hand corner, then click savings and investments, then investment, and select the owner of the policy. So for a joint bond, you can select more than one owner. Give the account a name, select the investment type. So we've got offshore bond or onshore bond. I'm going to use onshore bond, but the same fields apply to offshore bonds as well. Is this an existing investment? Should be left set to yes. You should input the original purchase year of the plan. Input the balance, which is the current value of the policy and the purchase value, which is the original premium paid. In insurance payout for joint policyholders, select the relevant field here. So if the policy pays out on last to die, select that there. The fee rate will pull through the default from plan settings, but you can edit it if necessary. And in the growth screen, the default growth rates will pull through, but you can select either entered growth rate or portfolio holdings and edit the defaults if required. Back in the basic screen, the next field we're going to look at is withdrawal strategy, which defaults to attempt to optimize. The withdrawal strategy tells the software how to take withdrawals if they exceed the tax deferred allowance. To optimize means that the software will try to work out the most efficient way of taking the withdrawals. But if you want to instruct the software to take withdrawals in a particular way, for example, if you want to take segment surrenders, you can choose always in cash segments. I'm going to leave it as attempt to optimize. Current segments are the number of segments in the policy which are still in force at the start of the Voyant plan. And original segments are the number of segments that the policy had when it was initially set up. I'm going to use 100 in both of these. So if there have been no segment surrenders at all, we would expect the number of segments to be the same in both these fields. We highly recommend that you don't leave these fields as the default of one segment because this could end up with unusual results in the cash flow. In previous withdrawals top ups, we have the remaining principal cost basis, which is a very important field for existing investment bonds. This tells the software how much of the tax deferred allowance remains in this policy as at the start of the Voyant plan. So if no withdrawals have been made from the bond, then the remaining principal cost basis should be the total of the premiums paid. If all of the tax deferred allowance has been used for really old policies, then the remaining principal cost basis would, would be zero. If some withdrawals have been taken, then the remaining principal is the difference between the premiums paid and the withdrawals taken. So in this example, the premiums are 500,000. And if the client has taken 50,000 pounds worth of withdrawals prior to this point plan being set up, then the difference is 450,000. So that's what goes in here. So the software will know that the bond has 450,000 pounds worth of tax deferred allowances, which can be taken. The most recent excess withdrawal only has to be completed if there has been a chargeable event on the policy in the past. So if there had been a chargeable event in 2021, for example, we'd put 2021 in here, but I'm going to leave it as it is. If there have been top ups to the policy in between the initial premium and the start date of the warrant plan, then you can input the details in here. The other screen which is important to complete for investment bonds is the timing screen. For most investment types in the software, this would control the contributions made into the plan. However, for investment bonds, this controls the holding period of the bond. For existing bonds, you would always use the start event as the bond start. So click plan start and set a start event. And if you want the bond held for the duration of the plan unless used to fund expenses, use plan end as the end event. Click done. And then you'll see in the savings and investments section, 
the investment bond has appeared. And we can look at the assets chart up here to track the value of the bond over time. I hope this helps, but do let us know should you need any further assistance in putting bonds.